There is a strong delusion that begins to happen when we stray from the clear teachings of, of the Bible. Hey, everybody, welcome, welcome. welcome to the Kingdom Conversations. Oh, uh, yeah. We have conversation connected to immigration. We have conversation connected to globalism. We have conversation connected to communism, if you will. God wants us to understand what's going on so that we are prepared. Okay? So that we are so that we are prepared. Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. welcome to the Kingdom Conversations. Oh, welcome, welcome. January 31st, 2024. We're so glad you're here. Amen, amen. What's up, beautiful co-host, powerful co-host, moving and ruling and reigning in the kingdom of God. What's up, though? What's up, y'all? What's up? What is going on? Let's go. We let ready me, for this let, word. Let me just say this from what you did last week was blowing all of our minds, yeah. catching us up what's going on in the culture of Christendom, going with the uh, government, going with the future of where the church needs to be. It was fantastic, and we're expecting more of what God has given you to give us tonight. The conversation is going to blow all of our minds. Foundational text is found in Matthew chapter 16, starting at verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. We agree. Father God, we thank you for this evening's conversation. We ask you, Lord, to word our mouths, Guard our hearts, open up our minds and spirits Lord, to the true understanding of this information for this hour, through your holy word, for today's time, the end times that we're living in. Thank you for the objection of what I you would have us to think about and focus on when it comes to the enemies trying to give us all kinds of situations and distractions. You are keeping us focused on Kingdom Conversations tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, we agree. We agree. Amen. You are listening to a Power Jams Productions. Let Power Jams Productions produce your radio show, podcast, or audiobook. With over 40 years of audio and video experience, call Reggie Rogers at 661-319-6345. That's 661-319-6345. You can find Power Jams Productions online at www.powerjams.org or YouTube at Power Jams Productions. We're going to go to Zechariah. You're going to look at Zechariah. Get your word and, and get, get over to Zechariah, chapter number 10. And we're going to look at verses 1 and 2 for where the, where the Spirit of the Lord says these words ah. to us. Okay? And, yeah. uh, and it, it gets very exciting. But, but this is where the Lord says this to us in Zechariah. Chapter number 10, verses 1 and 2. But before we go over there, I want you to get excited by James 5 and, and James 8, James 5, James chapter number 5, verse 17 and 18. Oh. The Bible says that, that Elijah was a man with a nature just like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, okay? And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months, verse 18. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruits. Can you say amen to that? This is the power of God working through his people in real time. So James talks to us about Elijah and says, I want you to know that even though Elijah was a prophet, he was a man with a nature just like ours. There was nothing more special about him than it is about us. What happened through him 
also can happen through us. He prayed and the spirit of God, God worked on his behalf to stop stuff that was happening naturally. Listen to where, listen to the word of God. God allowed his man to be an agent to stop the flow of things in the earth. And then yeah. God used his man to, to start the flow of things again in the earth. And what I'm saying by the spirit of the Lord is that God wants to use us as his agents to again start the flow and produce a fruit in the oh, land yeah. once again. Because we know that we're living in a time where the powers that be are telling us that it is not enough as they try to crowd us to live in the same cities and, and cause us to live in dense areas. God is saying not so. And God is telling us not to be afraid. God is telling us to pray. Yeah. God is telling us is. to pray. That's what he's telling us to do. He's telling us to ask him. He's telling us to pray because it is our prayers that's going to release the rain. Huh. Thank you, Lord. That's I just it. said that to um, myself. He says the prayer yeah. that's going to release the rain. And so the Lord yeah. is saying to you right now, what areas of your life need rain to be released? That's personal. Right. Then he says, what areas in your family need rain to be released? Power G. Demonstration, 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 demonstration. Then he yes. says, what areas of your church, your church body need rain to be released? What areas of your state need rain to be released? Yes. What areas of the government federally need rain to be released? Now, we already know that globally right now, there needs to be rain released in the areas of Gaza, that there needs to be rain released in the Hallelujah. areas of Israel, that in Iraq and in Iran and in the Middle East, there needs to be rain released. Oh. And so God is telling us to pray as his body of believers so oh, that the God that has been hey. sown, because then, watch this. The thing about this lesson tonight is that we're talking about God's agricultural time pattern and season. Okay. So the, the early rain came as a result of what two things that happened prior. You already had plowing. You already had sowing. Okay. So the, there was a season where believers and agents had already done the plowing. And then yeah. there was another season that came where there were agents that came along. Thank you, Jesus. And then they did the sowing. Okay. okay. Now that, those two time periods, they received the early rain. But we are that generation that comes and we ask God to send that rain that causes the fruit to mature. We are the ones that bring the maturity of the two seasons that happened before. So that's where we are right now. We are the people of God, the children of God, the agents of God that are called at this time to take a look at what God had planted by the previous generation, what has already been plowed, what has already been sowed. And God is saying, now you guys pray and pray earnestly because I am about to do something in the land. Yes. Hallelujah. How do you know? How do you know that? He already said it. He says it in James 5 and 7, therefore be patient until the coming of the Lord. Now we're going to go somewhere with this. Keep this in mind until the coming of the Lord. And then he tells us this, see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I, I want you guys to see something in this next slide. Uh, this is from the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary, just so that you understand this, okay? So it says that the early and the latter rains are accentuated in the Old Testament because of their critical agricultural role. Now, this is something that I just spoke about, but I just want to read it for clarity. The early rains prepare the ground for plowing and sowing at the end of the dry season. And the latter rains provide that last bit. Now, here's what the Holy Spirit was saying to me. That last bit, that last push. We are the last push people. Jesus. We are the ones that are in the latter days. We are in the end times. And so we are the last bit of moisture prayer warriors. Oh, I just thank the Holy Ghost. We are the last bit of moisture prayer warriors. Did you, that, that just, that, oh, oh, yeah. thank you guys. we are the last bit of moisture prayer warriors that mm -hmm. adds to the maturation of the cereal grains. Now, if you are paying attention to what's going on in the culture, they are telling us that climate change is the detriment of our society, that in the next few years, there are going to be droughts, there are going to be floods, there are going to be fires, there are going to be all these kinds of things 
and we won't be able to survive. But God tells us something different. God tells us that through our prayers, through our belief in him, not following the agenda of the world, because God always shows up where we believe him. It don't yeah. matter what it looks like. Power demonstration, 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 demonstration. You are listening to a Power Jams production. Let Power Jams Productions produce your radio show, podcast, or audiobook. With over 40 years of audio and video experience, call Reggie Rogers at 661-319-6345. That's 661-319-6345. You can find Power Jams Productions online at www.powerjams.org or YouTube at Power Jams Productions. Here's the thing. God literally brought them out of Egypt and then there was this big rock. And God said, just to show you who I am, I'm going to bring water from a rock. Yes. It's, it's, it's dry. He knocked on it. It's dry. It ain't. There's no pipes in it. There's nothing in it. To the natural mind, it don't seem like water should be able to come out of a rock. I'm going to bring water out of a rock. Get your cup. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Get if God cup. says, cup. I'm going to bring water out of the rock, Get get your get your uh, get your gallon get your five gallon get what you need to get just like the woman had uh, uh, she thought she was just going to take her little oil and, and make a little paper and send it down that's what she thought yeah yeah so when the prophet of God came and showed up he took something that didn't make sense in the natural and supernaturally increased what it was that only he could oh, so this is what Doctor Doris talks about a lot the supernatural legislation of God yes that's it the that's supernatural it. move of God. Because it's only when you believe God that God shows up. Ooh, See, God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Thank you. You Jesus. believe him. This is why he causes us to preach the word, because it is the preached word that gives us faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. And when you hear God's word expounded upon, preached and pulled out, the Holy Spirit gets in the wings of the word, yes. goes into yes. our hearts, into our souls, causes a rejoicing and a belief. At one point, we didn't think we could, but then we get up, people like, you know what? I know I can. I know I can. But by the Spirit of the Lord, I know that I can. Yes. God is telling us to ask for rain to counter the narrative of the fourth beast and his agents. Come on. Yeah. And what I keep saying about the fourth beast, I'm talking about this final government. The Bible calls it the fourth beast, this final world government. It's a kingdom. And we've been listening to it. It's telling us that we are. We haven't been fair that there's a lot of inequality. There's a lot of injustice. And while there are some truth to it, the enemy only gives you some truth only to fill you with lies. And so, yeah, there are areas where we need to do work, but he doesn't tell you the truth that things are better than they really are. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do in order to stop this psychological warfare. Come on. There, is, fire. there you go. It is psychological operation against the mind of the people to get them to be scared, to get them to not. Here's, here's what happens. When you think that there's not enough, what do you do? You close up, you close your windows, you close your doors, you close your pocket, you close your wallet, you close your heart. And in this time, Church of Philadelphia, listen to the word of God. We just went to, to Revelation 3 and 7. If you're going to be the church in Philadelphia, Come on. If you're going to get the key that opens doors, if you're going to get the key that closes doors that can't be opened, you're going to have to have your heart open, believing that God is that God that, hallelujah, this is what he does. The Bible says, and was the second Chronicles 16 and 9, that, that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout Come the whole on. earth. Oh, yeah. He's looking. He's looking for those whose hearts are perfect towards him. Why? Because he wants to give us the key. He's yeah. looking for those that have their hearts in the right place so that I can, he's like, who can I give these keys to? Who can I trust to, to, to not abuse the sheep? Who oh, can I on, give oh, that won't on. abuse my lambs? Who can I give these keys to that will open the storehouse and oh, give oh, grain and give God. feed to those that need it in due season? Who can I give these keys to? Oh, Come on, Are Saints. you hearing the word of the Lord? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So God says in Zechariah 10 and 1, he says to, to ask in the time, he says, ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. He says the Lord will make flashing clouds. Let me stop right there. In the time of the latter rain, it is only supposed to be that last little bit of moisture. Remember how we read that's supposed to be that last little bit of moisture. Yeah. But God says here's something that we need to get excited about. God said, if you ask me 
if you ask me for rain in the latter time of rain, mm. God says, I'm going to give you flashing clouds. What this means in some translations, I'm going to send thunderstorms. Yeah. Yes. You, you missed it. <laughs> come on, come on. It's not, it's only supposed to be a little bit more because 70% of the rain has already been disseminated. God is already by this, by the time that we get here, we only supposed to have like about 30, 30% more rain. But mm. God is saying, if you ask me, for rain in a time where it's only supposed to be a little bit more, I'm going to give you thunderstorms. Come on. I'm going to give you so much more than what you ask for. Hallelujah. Why? Because he says, I'm going to give you showers of rain and grass in the field for everyone. everyone. He says, I want it to be for everyone, not just for some, but for everyone. Praise Thank God. You. Now, he says, the idols speak delusion and the diviners envision lies and they tell false dreams. They comfort in vain. He says, therefore, the people wind their way. They, they, they scatter themselves. They're, they're trying to figure things out like sheep, and they are in trouble because there my is God. no shepherd. My now, God. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. My uh, so I, I need to stop here just for a minute because when we're talking about idols, I need the listeners and people who want to call to understand that. Uh, how do I want to say this? The, the idols, um, well, let, me give you, let, me, let me give you an image here. These carved figurines uh, many times would be the person that carved it would take this idol and they would breathe into it. They would breathe their breath into these idols, believing that this is one of the dynamics that activated the idol itself. OK, now this was something that was imparted to them as a result of the fallen angels. So. When we look at Genesis chapter six and we see those angels that look and took the daughters of men, um, uh, then you go forward and you see that God in Deuteronomy 32, he disseminated and gave uh, nations to the sons of God. Take a look there really quick. I wasn't going to do this, but take a look just so that you understand what I'm saying. Take a look at Deuteronomy. Turn in your Bibles. Look at Deuteronomy chapter number 32. And uh, I want you to look at verse eight. Now, some of your Bibles might, it depends on what translation you have, okay? Let me read to you the English Standard Version. Okay, so the English Standard Version takes Deuteronomy 32 and 8, and it says it this way. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders of the peoples according to the numbers of the sons of God. Okay, mm -hmm. now... This is something that we've talked about before on a call called the uh, the the the, uh, the divine council worldview. Mm -hmm. yes. So you know, some people that are new to this will have to you know do a greater explanation of that at another point. But the reason why I'm bringing this in is because the sons of God are angelic beings; they are divine beings, and God gave mm -hmm. them to the. And this is new for some, but God literally divided mankind, and He allowed. The sons of God, he allowed divine beings to be over all of the other nations. And what he did, and you see that in the next verse, is that he took Israel for himself. And they weren't called Israel at that point, but he took, and he's like, okay, okay come on. I'm going to have Jacob as my inheritance. So he gave all of the other nations. Yes. The reason why he did this is because they were living in disobedience. And so he was taking Abraham and that seed of Abraham. And he said that they are my inheritance. Okay. Why this is important is because these sons of God are connected with these idols. Okay. These sons of God that ruled these people, they had given them these ideas of falsehood and delusion. And so the people that were believing yes. these gods were believing lies. They were believing delusion. They're believing false yes. dreams. Okay. And so that, that is why this is important because as the children of God, what God is calling us to do is to pray for rain, <laughs> pray for rain that comes and counteracts all of this demonic activity that is happening in the land. God has called us to be salt and to be light. Y'all know that. And so when, when yeah. we are doing battle, part of our doing battle is understanding what the warfare is all about. God doesn't My want God. us to be ignorant, but he wants us to understand that we are tearing down strongholds, that we are tearing yeah. down the enemy's kingdom. And when we talk about these idols, we are tearing down the work that they have done throughout the nations. Okay. 
One thing I want you to know is that it is teraphim is the plural of Rapha. Now we say Jehovah Rapha, right? Yes. God our healer. Healer, right? yeah. So teraphim is the plural of Rapha. Wow. So what was happening where people were believing that these idols could heal them. They had associated uh -huh. healing. They associated cures. They associate the fix wow, with God. these idols. Okay. So these, these teraphim that, that we're talking about, where God's telling us to ask for rain, mm -hmm. he is telling us to counteract this, this, this teaching, this false teaching, where people have believed that things that could heal them, huh, you see, it? they can't heal. And here's what the Lord was telling me. He was showing me that these family idols, right? Mm -hmm. These family idols are connected with the language that we're using. There's a lot of people talking about ancestors. And, uh, you know, our ancestors passed this down and we learned yeah. this from our ancestors and all of that. And the Lord is telling us to be careful. Don't follow all of this ancestor talk because a lot of this ancestor talk goes back to these uh, beliefs My that God. there was healing that could come through what they Jesus. taught instead of what God taught. Come on. Hear the word of the Lord. Yes. The Lord. That, 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 don't believe that, that a family idol, don't believe that, that the things that your ancestors taught you, unless it was the word of God. Come if on. If it didn't teach you the word of God, you better throw that stuff out. There, there is no cure in any other but Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, so be careful with that. Be careful with that. The Lord says this. God says this, Isaiah 43, 19. Again, this is how God wants us to be encouraged. He wants us to take this language and embrace it. Thank he says, God. I am going to send you rivers in the desert to give drink to my people hallelujah to give drink to my chosen yes yeah uh, god wants us to be power beloved with the knowledge that he has our back that if we go to him and ask us abba father daddy we need some water to give to these people what he says you give them something to eat when we just read that was it oh. last week he's That's like last week. people are hungry he's like you know you know should we send them away Jesus says, no, you give them something to eat. Yeah. Like, well, we, only, we only got a little bit of fish and a little bit of bread. <laughs> and the Lord is like, well, that's enough. Because if you put it in my hands, I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to bless it. And when I break it, it's going to be more than enough for all of the people. Ooh, glory. Man, we, you better oh, see these on, connections. On, okay, quit quit, quit yeah. playing. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I mean, this is what God wants from us in the time period like this. We, we need to walk out of our doors, not being afraid of any door that seemed like it was closed. Come on. We need to not be afraid of any door that seemed like, OK, that, that we can't open it. Because if God determines for it to be open, guess what's going to happen? It's going, going to open. open. Now, y'all must know what y'all seem like y'all in the vein here. We hey. walking in it. Come on. Kingdom Conversations. Listen. Thought you okay. knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk more about this delusion because what the enemy is trying to do is bring delusion, trying to, to scare us, trying to bring okay, fear. And so 2 Thessalonians begins to talk to us and how to address this. Number one, to develop the right type of a mindset. And yeah. so here in 2 Thessalonians, he's like, now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. We ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either oh, by man. spirit or by word or by letter as in oh. from us as though the day of Christ had come. Now, I'm we're going to shake something up tonight. Shake it up. <laughs> because, yeah. and here's, here's the question that's about to be on the table. Because, as I've said before, there are two positions on rapture, post-rapture uh, gathering or pre-rapture gathering, that things are going to happen. We're not going to see it, right? The church is going to be gone. We're going to miss all of it. And what the Lord would say through his word tonight is pay attention to something. Second Thessalonians 2 and 3, let no one deceive you by any means for that day. Now, hold on to this word. It's, it's going to talk about two things as that day. We just read. Are, are the coming of our Lord, that's that's one thing, and our gathering together to him. That's two things. Okay. When you go over to the second, second Thessalonians 2 and 3, Paul condenses this into one 
day, oh, one wow. event. All right. Our gathering together and the day are talked about as one. Okay. He says, let no one deceive you by any means for that day. What day? The coming of our Lord Jesus and our gathering together. Talks about his one day. He says, it will not come unless the falling away comes first. Uh -oh. Okay. Now, here's, here's where it says, like, boom, what you going to do with this? And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. So let me ask you this. Do you know who the man of sin is today? Ooh. Do you? I'm asking you. Do you know who? Okay. No. Do you know who the son of perdition is today? No. So, no. so some might say, who is this man of sin? Some might say, who is this son of perdition? Well, we're talking about the Antichrist, okay? <laughs> the, the man of sin, the son of perdition is the Antichrist. So until the Antichrist is revealed, okay, that day is not going to come. There. Amen. So all this talk, so, so here's what I'm telling you. All this talk about Jesus is about to come. Do you know who the Antichrist is? So, so position that in your mind. If, if, if Begin to say, yeah, Jesus could come any day after you know who the Antichrist is. If he is revealed, if you see him, if you know who he is, then you can probably say a little more boldly, oh, Jesus, come back any day. We're about to be gathered to him. But the Bible says. The Bible the says. Come on now. That, that the falling away and the revelation of the man of sin happens first. And then okay. it goes into the description of who he is that he opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself My that God. he is God. My God. Yes, ma'am. He says, don't you remember that, that when I was still with you, I told you these things? He says, and now you know what is restraining, that he right. may be revealed in his own time. Now, here's yeah. another here's another, another little hitch in your potential get along. In <laughs> 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7, he says, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Now, let me wow. put this before you. The Bible is telling us that the revelation of the Antichrist is in direct connection with the Holy Spirit moving out of the way so that he can be revealed. Oh, Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts about that? that he be taken out of the way. Now, this this does require some further study because, Lord, what are you talking about? Are you talking about removing the Holy Spirit from the earth when you reveal this Antichrist at the same time? Because, Lord, don't take him out of the way. The Lord is saying, ask me for rain. You better ask the Lord for rain. Come on now. You, you better ask the Lord. The Lord is telling us to ask for rain. Don't worry about what you think, but ask the Lord for rain in this Hallelujah. moment. You better Hallelujah. ask the Lord for some rain. Shoot. It says, and then the lawless one will be revealed. When? When he who restrains is taken out of the way. Ooh, okay. my God. Oh, and no, then no, no. and then the Lord will, it says, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth, okay, and destroy with the brightness of his coming, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. So that, that is the ultimate end of the lawless, the, the lawless one. Christ is going to destroy him. He says that the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. So this mm -hmm. Antichrist is going to be empowered. In the way that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, this Antichrist figure, this, this lawless one, this son of perdition, his working, his power is going to be by the dragon, by Satan. And he's going to have all kinds of power, all kinds of signs, and all kinds of lying wonders. Now, here's one thing that, that, that I want to drop on is... Some of these lying wonders are going to be fantastic. Okay. We, we, wow. we can look at, and it's already happening. There's already been a cure, if you will. Now, you know, some, I don't, I don't want to upset somebody with this because not all medicine is bad. Not all technology is bad. But Man. some of these things are being used as, uh, as, as a replacement for God. Okay. Yep. Some of these lying wonders, for example, would be if you're not aware they have already introduced a, a, a cure, if you will, um, for sickle cell. They've already been able to go into the cell with modern technology and produce cures. These things that produce wonders, these wonders, beloved, are going to so seduce many people into believing that this one world government, this beast system is the thing to give their allegiance yes. to. Yes. Wow. So when we're talking about all all power, all signs and lying wonders, 
Listen, there are not going to be things that people are going to reject as bad. There are going to be things that people embrace as wow. good. Wow, good. My God. He says, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now, part of the love of the truth is one of the things that I dropped. Some people don't believe that the warfare we are in is as angelic as it is. It's too much for their minds. When we talk about um, we're fighting against principalities and powers, some people are like, yeah, yeah, they hear that. But it's hard for them to accept Mm -hmm. that angelic and divine beings are at the the helm manipulating and maneuvering and being the manners in which people are, you know, conducting themselves. It's hard for them to believe that. So to think like, oh, no, that's that's too much. Like you guys are making too much of that. I'm telling you guys that angels are behind a lot of the manipulation. They're behind the one world government. And every time you say one world government, you say globalists and things like that. People go, ah, you're just a conspiracy theorist. Ah, you're just making things up. But when God's word tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but that we're wrestling against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, beloved, that's what we're talking about. They are using people in order to manipulate and control the world that we're living in. You guys following? We good? We good. Yes. Praise God. Okay. So now. This is another part of asking God for rain. The Lord was saying that there are seeds. There are things that have already been plowed and seeds that have already been planted within us that the Holy Spirit is saying, ask me for rain because these things have not fully matured yet. And I thank you, Lord. You know it and I know it. You know that there are deposits that God has made that are not fully mature, that you know need to be mature because there are people that are depending on you. There are people that are depending on us and there are things that are not fully developed in our lives. God. Some of this stuff we're, that I'm talking about, we're like, God, I know a little bit of that, but it's not fully developed. God, yeah. I've heard some of that before, but it's not fully matured. God, I, I, I see some of that, but it's at a seedling stage. Oh, Lord, what? So God is telling us, ask me for rain, because it's not about, you know, little, little, this little Mr. Snowden. It's not about, you know, Queen Dr. Lawrence, you know, the, the people that's on the call. It's about you asking me to bring to maturity the thing that I placed in you from the foundation of Come the world. On. You Holy asking God. me because when you ask me, there are people that you are responsible for. I, there got people that I'm responsible for, people that you're responsible for, and God is saying tonight for you to ask him ask for the him. maturing of the things that he has placed down in you because where we are right now in the world requires that. You can't yeah. have the call and wonder about what God placed in me working for you. Now, there's an impartation. God is imparting even in the call of the night. Yeah, there are impartations, but it is the spirit of God that brings to fruition and the maturity, the things that only happen when you ask. That's why God says that you have to ask me, that you have to seek and that you have to knock. He would not have said that if that was not a part of the procedure. Ask, seek, and knock. Why? Because it is in the asking that God says, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for you to ask me. And, and, and when you ask me, I'm going to give you, like James says, he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God ask because God. God gives liberally, liberally. There it is. That's that latter rain. He gives liberally. He gives liberally that wisdom so that you will know what to do. And he won't upbraid you. He won't put you down. He won't, I you mean, won't be reproached. Uh, God will be like, I've just been waiting for you. My God. I've been waiting for you to ask. Praise God. Yeah, that's so right. Now, this, this delusion that the enemy is trying to bring, it is, um, let me give you this word really quick. Now, here's what's important. If you don't know the word of God and you are not following orthodoxy, for example, uh, there's a a, a preacher named Alistair Begg. And uh, man, love Alistair Begg. You know, just a Scottish accent, gets on there, does, does a great job teaching. Recently, he has put it out there that it is okay for us to, to attend transgender weddings. Now, that that caused a whole storm of controversy and they kicked him off the radio here and there and now you got people talking about him because why? Because there is a straying, if you will, from orthodoxy. There's, there isn't a place where we have adopted this way of moving. Now, 
God is his judge. I'm not saying that, you know, this man is, you know, doomed or, or condemning him in any way. But what I am saying is that there is a strong delusion that begins to happen when we stray from the clear teachings of, of the Bible. And I'm not about to get into all of the uh, of the teachings on, on sexuality in this call, but I am saying that the, the, the straying is happening as a result of what's at the bottom here. First Timothy 4.1 that these deceiving spirits, it's the same word, planos is the word for delusion, okay? That mm-hmm. the spirit tells us in the last times that some will depart from the faith. They're going to listen to these spirits. They're going to listen to these doctrines of demons. Lord, send the rain. Lord, send the rain. rain. We, 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 we need the rain, Lord. Send the rain because these, these do doctrines of demons are being disseminated to us so easily and so readily. That we we are being seduced, like you know what? Ah, uh, maybe it's okay. We're 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 letting down our guards, and God is saying, no, 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 it's it's not okay. No. And what what's happening as a result of us not loving the truth? And this is how this is how much God is not playing with it. If if you don't want to obey what God is telling you to do, He will allow you to be destroyed. Now that's that's hard. Remember when I talked about the divine council? Yeah. Now, this this is in First Kings, and we're looking at. Chapter 22, verses 19 through 22. And again, divine counsel language. But what, what this is going to show us is that God ain't playing. If God is telling you to do something and you haven't done it, especially as a leader, oh. man. Okay, so now Ahab was the leader. But this is what he says. Uh, Micaiah was a prophet. He says, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. He says, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and... All the hosts of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. Now, make a note for yourself. Write down Psalm 82. We're not going to go there, but Psalm 82 is a picture of the divine council, just so that for your further study. Okay. now what the Lord says in the next verse is who will persuade Ahab to go up that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead because the background of Ahab, he was bad. I'll just leave it at that. He yeah, he was man. disobedient. He mm-hmm. was bad. But here you have the, the, the host of heaven. That's what they're called in this in this passage. And they're speaking to God. God, here's the thing. God doesn't need agents. He doesn't need a host, but he chose to have a host. He chose to use a host. Amen. So he says this. One spoke in this manner and another spoke in that manner. It said, then the spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said to him, in what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Amen. So what what this What this presents to us and shows us is that when God is allowing us to to experience the consequences of not loving the truth. Remember, it is because of the lack of loving God's word, loving his truth, loving what he has revealed to us. When we fail to do that, God will allow us to experience the consequences and then give us over into. I think um, you'll be looking at the book of Romans giving us over into what the Bible calls a reprobate mind. When you don't want to retain the knowledge of God in your heart and in your soul, God's like, I'm not going to play with you. God's like, I'm giving you the truth, my word. And when you want to act as if I didn't give you the truth, you want to act as if I didn't give you my word. Okay. I'll give you over to a reprobate mind. I'll give you over to a mind that is able to be deceived by lies and by deception. Second Peter 2.13, that, that backs this up, that um, he says, and, and the people who are living in unrighteousness, Second Peter 2.13, he says that they will receive the wages of, of unrighteousness as those who counted the pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots no. and blemishes carousing in their own deception while they feast with you. So recently here in the news, this young man, he killed his father cut his head off, okay? And one of the reasons why this is important is because as the body of Christ right now, 
we are being connected and lined up because of our beliefs with weirdos and crazy people. Mm -hmm. Wow. Lord's in the rain. Justin Moan, the son who was suspected of beheading his father, showing off his head in the YouTube video, was deeply involved in conspiracy theories, heavily indebted in school, and thought he was the second Messiah. Tuesday night around 9 p.m. in the evening, the 32-year-old Moan was taken into custody at Fort Indiana Town Gap in Pennsylvania on suspicion of killing his 68-year-old father, Mike. The son held up a severed head after ranting for 14 minutes on YouTube about how the federal government is to blame for woke mobs and immigrants and how they have destroyed the country and how vile globalists and communists are. Yeah. Now, we are being connected because we use language like woke mobs, right? We use language and we, we speak against, you're not necessarily against, but, but we have conversation connected to immigration. My we God. have conversation connected to globalists. We have conversation connected to communism, if you will, which is just, you know, the sharing of uh, you, you take wealth from one, you give it to another. That's the idea of communism. But what is happening in real time is that they are taking crazies like this and they are grouping him with people yeah. who have ideas that are similar. So pay attention to what's going on in the world, because this is a part of it. this guy thought he was the second Messiah and all these other kinds of things. And I'm not I'm not going to get into some of the other uh, like ideas that. tonight. But what you need to know is that God wants us to understand what's going on so yeah. that we are prepared. Okay. Yeah, so that yeah. we are, so that we are prepared. And so, um, so, so that's it, beloved, you know, we're, we're at the end of this. We're, we are at the end. There's not a whole lot more that we need to say, you know, with respect wow. to um, a lot of the events that's going on in the world, because Ooh. we are still, we're still, uh, where we were last week. I mean, the things are still status quo. You know, there are we're on the uh, on the verge of potential World War Three. We're still waiting for for disease X, you know, to to make its appearance. Mm -hmm. There are multiple things that we are still waiting on. And so as we wait, God is not telling us to just sit on our hands. God is telling us and. to ask him for yeah. rain. And now, yeah. now this rain, this this rain, this, this is the last point. He told us when he showed us. Joseph, when he allowed Pharaoh to have oh. the dream of, of seven years of plenty and then seven years of drought, yeah. okay, that this was a time period for us to pray for rain because we know that there is a difficult time coming to pray for rain so that God gives us the ability and the resources that we need for everything that's happening and everything that's about to come. Okay, rain in relationships, rain in our family, rain in our, in our individual lives, rain in our relationships, and rain in all of the other areas that were already mentioned. Oh hey, hey, amen, 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 amen. Powerjams.org P-O-W-E-R J-A-M-Z dot org. Power Jams. Demonstration. 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 Let Power Jams Productions produce your radio show, podcast, or audio book. With over 40 years of audio and video experience, call Reggie Rogers at 661-319-6345. That's 661-319-6345. You can find Power Jams Productions online at www.powerjams.org or YouTube at Power Jams Productions.